Introduction to Gash Dorites. At 1.30 in the morning, so after that time. This could be fun. Okay. <laughs> right. Why gas turbines? Why not carry on with diesel generator sets? Why not use them to create the power that have been going a lot longer than gas turbines have in that situation? Okay. And what we're going to look at right now is a sort of a broad overview of the gas turbine. Okay. We'll get into more in depth into the various parts of it as we go through the next sessions. This first session is about the, the, the overview of the gas turbine, and the second part of it is talking about the theoretical side of the gas cycle on the gas turbine. So, what we're going to, we're going to talk about is the requirements. Okay? What's the basic parts about the gas turbine? Why are we using them? Okay. First of all, they're easy to install. They're easy to maintain. They give us high reliability and very high efficiency. When it comes to the amount of energy we get from a gas turbine, compared to the same amount of energy we get from a same amount of fuel used in a diesel generator set, the gas turbine is much higher efficiency. So we get more energy from that one. Okay. It's much easier to conform to environmental issues than things like a diesel engine or a coal-fired power station. Okay. We can use just about any fuel in a gas turbine as well. <coughs> Provided we know what the fuel is going to be and we adjust the engine to suit, anything that can be measured can be used in a gas turbine. If we could, if we could measure coal dust, we could use coal dust. Yeah? We can't make it, so we don't. But normally, a gas turbine is some sort of liquid fuel or um, gas, natural gas. <coughs> Why is the world moving towards gas turbines, you ask yourself? It's because they are a lot more full. Several factors coming into this. One is the flexibility in that they are sized everything from one that will fit in the side palm of your hand and give three or four megawatts right up to big ones that are producing half a million kilo, uh, megawatts. Yeah? So they are extremely adaptable, but they're relatively small for the size. To get the same size power out of a, um, let's say, a diesel set, you look at an engine that's probably two or three times the size <coughs> and takes up a lot more space. Okay, they're far more reliable than an engine. Think about it: with a gas turbine, the only moving parts are the spinning parts in the middle, and they're held up by bearings. You haven't got reciprocating pistons and what up and down and valves and closing and that sort of stuff. So, from a, a reliability point of view. We get a lot more um, work out of a gas turbine before we have to service it. And then generally, it's a quick service in the fact that we take one out, put one in, and send the other one away to be fixed up. Right? The gear is very high performance for the size. And like I said earlier, we can use multiple types of fuel in the gas turbine itself. So they're pretty flexible, easygoing engines. Now, if you look at what makes them powerful, okay, we look at two things. What, where do they get the power from? Now, it's very much the same as in a piston engine. Right? With a piston engine, the more air you can cram into the piston, the more fuel you can add, so the more energy and the more power you get out of it. The gas turbine is the same. The pressure ratio means we can, that's the amount of air we can get into the combustion chamber. The higher the pressure ratio, the more air, or oxygen if you like, we can get into the combustion chamber. Okay? Then we set fire to it. <coughs> and in the gas turbine, we then have the what's called the firing temperature. The hotter the firing temperature can be, that means the more fuel we've added, the more fuel we've added, the more energy we're going to get out of that engine. So, by increasing either the pressure ratio or the firing temperature, 
we get a lot more work from the engine. Yeah? Which means a lot more efficiency because <coughs> the more work we get out for the same fuel, the more efficient things are going to be. Okay. Now, where do we use gas turbines? <coughs> aircraft propulsion. Um, unless we're working in the aircraft industry, you're not going to see too much of that. But that's where traditionally we see, and we all know, and that the, where the gas turbine is used, right? To power our 747s and 727s, that sort of stuff. A lot of use of power generation as well. Um, in Europe, a lot of the power, a, a sort of fair percentage of the power, is done using gas turbines in conjunction with heat generators to take the heat out of the the exhaust gases to give us some pretty high levels of power output for relatively low input as far as the um, the fuel or, or the, the natural gas goes. Okay, they're also used in plants, in petrochemical plants specifically, for mechanical drives to drive the big pumps, the pumps that move the oil and the and the, and the gas around, and uh, we use them as direct mechanical drives, and we use them in ships. Yeah, we do as propulsion units. Normally in ships, they're used to drive generators, and the generators then drive a motor that's attached to the propeller. They're not normally attached directly to the propeller because they rotate too fast for that scenario. Okay. So, we mentioned the ones are, we look at this aircraft propulsion. Three types of aircraft propulsion. We have a turbojet, a turboprop, and a turbofan. The difference here being the amount of air that goes through the engine. In the turbojet, that's a traditional pure jet engine that we all know and are read about on the aircraft. It sucks air in the front, pumps it through a compressor, puts compressed air into a combustion chamber, adds fuel, the air expands, rushes out the back across a turbine. The turbine takes some energy out of the air to turn the compressor, but then the air rushing out the back end falls under Newton's law, where you have every action as an equal and opposite reaction. If you force a large amount of air to go backwards, it's going to push the engine forwards. And that's the principle of a turbojet. Right? We move large volumes of air in one direction, and we get thrust in the other direction. Now, if we then take that scenario, but we now want to drive a propeller aircraft, a propeller on an aircraft, the engine is exactly the same except for at the back we add another turbine. Now a turbine is a, is a wheel that takes energy from a fast moving gas stream. Okay, so with a turbo propeller, what we do is the last stage of the turbine is a power turbine and that's connected to a mechanical drive which then moves forward and drives the propeller at the front. So in this case we're taking the energy out of the gas stream before it leaves the engine to turn that last turbine and the turbine is connected to a big propeller and that's where we get our power from. Okay? So one, purely the jet of air coming out the back pushes us forward and the turbo prop we take the energy out of that jet of air and turn it into mechanical energy to drive the propeller. And then lastly we have what's normally used these days on most commercial most air airlines and most aircraft is what's called the turbo fan engine. Okay? These are used on commercial airlines, they're not used too much on the military stuff. A turbo fan has, if you like, a multi-bladed propeller on the front. Okay? And most of that air is fed through a duct, a divergent duct at the front. So it works on the same principle as a jet ski and um, water pump motors. It takes air in, jams it through a duct, forces it out the back end and we get our thrust from that. About 20% of the air is used to go through the engine and that, that is what keeps the engine going that goes through the normal engine process. 
But 80% of the air on a turbofan does not go through the engine, it goes through the ducts on the outside. When it's pulled into the duct, it gets, it gets faster because the, the volume decreases. Like so on a hose pipe, if you pinch a hose pipe, the pressure gets bigger and push the, the water further, pushing air through a divergent duct, a conversion duct, sorry, does exactly the same thing. It speeds it up. So what comes at the back end is very high speed air, and again, the opposite to that is pushing the engine forward. So that's a turbofan engine. Most of the air in a turbofan does not go through the engine. Most of the air in a turboprop does. It's taken out by the um, turbine at the back end, and all of the air in a turbojet goes through the engine. Now, this is a typical industrial type turbine. Yeah, Roger, it works very much like a multi blade propeller, except it's in a duct. Now, the whole theory behind the water jets and that on these, on these um, ski mobiles and that is that they take water or air and jam it through a, back, a convergent duct and you've got to spray out the back end that's got a lot more energy than the mass that's coming in the front. So think of it as a multi bladed propeller. Now, if you look here, this is a, a pretty standard, but this is an industrial type turbine. We have our intakes here. Okay. Now, we used to see them on aircraft, but we have a big round thing at the front, and all the air goes into it. And an industrial one, there's our intake here. This will obviously come through a filter and through noise suppressors and all that sort of stuff. But the air will come into here, it's passed through a multi stage compressor. Okay moves into a combustion chamber where fuel is added, see the fuel pipes? Fuel is added in here. The air heats up and rushes at the back end across these turbines. Now the last turbine here is the power turbine and that's the one that's connected by a shaft that comes all the way through to the gearbox at the front. So at the back end we've got air rushing out that way but this engine is not going anywhere. So the idea is to use a turbine to take as much energy from that air as possible and convert it to mechanical energy at the front to drive the gearbox and take the output there and the shaft is there to drive this gearbox to give us whatever mechanical drive we need to whatever piece of equipment we want to drive with it. Okay. Right. Now, when we're talking about gas turbines, they come in several categories, shall we say. Okay. Small ones, less than 2 megawatts. And they can go right down to a gas turbine that will fit in your hand, called a micro turbine. And they'll give you 4 or 5 kilowatts of power. Yeah? Use natural gas or gas fuel. Excuse me, and give you four or five kilowatts of power, right? And up to a complete turbine stroke um, alternator, right? Which will give you up to about two megawatts. More than that, between five and fifty, are medium-sized turbines. Okay, they're normally actual flow. Again, later on in the course, we're going to talk about axial flow and uh, radial flow, or centrifugal flow compressors. Then you get the big daddies. Gas turbines have been designed specifically for the job of driving big gas turbines, big um, alternators. Okay, they have anything from 50 up to 480, and in fact. I've heard recently bigger than 480 megawatts. Now, 480 megawatts is a big engine. Okay? And like we said, the temperatures on these things are to get the efficiency, temperature, and compression ratios. 
And some of these large frame turks can get well over 1300 degrees centigrade. That's at the metal. Now, think about that. That means the air, the burning temperature of the air inside the combustion chamber will get up to over 1300 degrees. Now, that's why most of the air in a, in a gas turbine, as it passes through, that air is not used for combustion, it's actually used to cool the, 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 the metal and, and to isolate the combustion process from the actual metal of the combustion chamber. Otherwise, at 1300 degrees, it would melt most metal. Yeah? So you'll see when we talk about the combustion chambers, that a lot of the air that passes through the engine is actually designed to just shape the flame and keep the heat away from the walls of the combustion chamber.